You're listening to Worth Electronics What's Up Radio Podcast, where each week we are seeing what's up in the world of electronics and PCB design. We'll be checking in with leading industry experts and our Worth Electronic technology specialists. We're going to shine a light on interesting topics such as energy harvesting, wireless power transfer, EMI, and so much more. Tune in to get technical design tips and applications during your commute, at your desk, or wherever you might be with Worth Electronics What's Up podcast. Because of the recent COVID-19 pandemic, there is a need for disinfection technologies and it's skyrocketed. Everywhere you look, there's a new type of cleaning chemical, an oil, or even a light application. And one of these newest technologies is disinfection using UVC LEDs. UVC light is exceptionally potent for enacting germs, bacteria, and viruses. But how can you disinfect using these UVC LEDs, and how can it be proven? Well, today's podcast comes from our recent webinar on the topic. Dominic Cook is a product manager for our optoelectronics division at Worth Electronic in Germany. In this presentation, Dominic discusses the working mechanism behind disinfection with UVC radiation, and he gives simulated examples on how to achieve disinfection. And because UVC radiation can cause skin and eye tissue damage, his webinar wraps up with tips on safety when working with UVC light. Enjoy this presentation of UV LEDs for disinfection with Dominic Cook. First of all, I will explain a little bit on uh, what UV light actually is, the difference between UVA, UVB, and UVC. Then I will uh, de- explain a little bit on how disinfection works with the UVC light. Then, like for example, how how the working mechanism is. You see already on the right hand side it destroys the DNA, but we will look a little bit closer how this actually works. Then also the wavelength dependence of the uh, disinfection efficiency. And also uh, what's really important for um, designers is uh, uh, I will give you some uh, um, hints on what doses are required for disinfection. So basically the amount of UV light that is needed for disinfection. Uh, Then I will also show a few application examples and um, simulations. And in the very end, I will show a little bit uh, something about safety and uh, the maximum allowed daily doses to get on the eyes or skin. Because as you see on the right hand side, it, the UVC light can damage uh, DNA. So basically it's also dangerous for us humans. So uh, uh, let's start with the, uh, the explanation what UV light is. So uh, um, if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, you see there's a, there's a visible light, a visible light spectrum from something like 400 nanometers to 780 nanometers. Uh, for higher wavelengths, the uh, light is called infrared light, and for lower wavelengths, it's called UV light. And the UV light is now like separated into UVA, UVB, and UVC. So uh, um, you see UVA has a, um, a wavelength from 315 to 400 nanometer, and it has less energy than, for example, UVB or UVC light. And due to this high energy of the UVC light, it's also so powerful for disinfection. So um, first I want to give you a short overview of what our current uh, virtual electronic UV LED products uh, look like. So uh, currently in our portfolio, we have um, a few UVA LEDs with different wavelengths from 365 nanometer to 405 nanometers. And, uh, but also uh, since a few months already, uh, we have UVC LEDs with 275 nanometers and two different um, optical powers. So the optical power for the LEDs is usually called the radiant flux. UVA LEDs usually are used in horticulture uh, for security and counterfeit detection, uh, but mostly in curing application, for example, uh, for adhesives and glues. Whereas UVB, are mainly used also for horticulture, but uh, they can also be used for skin treatment or treating vitamin D deficiency. So this is a quite interesting uh, application because actually you can combine those two, the horticulture and this uh, vitamin D topic. So uh, if you take some mushrooms and 
like during the growth process, you shine some uh, UVB light on it, you will get uh, those mushrooms will get loaded with uh, vitamin D, and then you get like vitamin D loaded mushrooms, which is really uh, interesting application uh, for countries where you have a little bit or not enough sun uh, to uh, um, produce your own vitamin D in the sunlight. And uh, of course, UVC, which is mainly used for disinfection, but there are also a few sensing applications for that. But uh, we will focus mainly on this um, disinfection. So you can, uh, of course, do surface disinfection of masks, phones, whatever. And this can also be used in the food industry. So uh, imagine you have um, eggs and you want to kill off all the salmonella on the eggs. Well, salmonella can cause food poisoning, so it's good to remove them before that. And uh, you could do this with uh, UVC LEDs. Mm, the other hot topic right now is air purification. Of course, you can use um, air filters, which all, also include UVC LEDs, uh, which will kill off um, coronaviruses that are flowing in the air. But you can also use it for water disinfection. So. Uh, uh, Let's have a little bit closer look how the disinfection actually works. So uh, when a UV photon hits on DNA, it splits the chemical bonds of the nucleic acids. And in the end, uh, it, will, uh, it will result in a, a formation of timeline dimers, as seen here on the right. And this damage actually uh, leads to the inactivation of this organism. If it's a bacterium, then the bacterium can't replicate uh, anymore after those uh, damages. Um, well, viruses don't have DNA, they have RNA, but uh, there's a similar process happening for RNA in viruses as well. So uh, now the question is, what wavelength is actually the best for disinfection? So uh, there have been uh, quite a few studies and I, I'm showing just one of them. Here you see the black curve, uh, which gives you the wavelength dependent RNA damage. Of course, if you have more RNA damage, then uh, the uh, disinfection result is better. So, and what you will see is that uh, for this RNA, for this specific virus, uh, the peak is around 260 nanometers. Depending on what study you look at, you might this peak might shift by like 10 nanometers to either side, and it also is a little bit different for um, bacteria. It will also be a little bit higher, I think, uh, about 265. But anyways, um, mostly the peak is some, somewhere around 260 and 265 nanometers. Compared to this, I show you here in red uh, the spectrum of our new UVC LED. So it has a peak wavelength of 275 nanometers. And you see, it's not ideal. The, it would be, of course, better if the peak wavelength is uh, close to those 260 nanometers. It's not that simple because what you also have to consider is not only the correct wavelength, but also um, uh, you have to have enough light coming out of the uh, LED. So basically, it doesn't help you if you have the right wavelength, if your wall plug efficiency of the LED is way too low. And this is why I show you an overview of a few um, LEDs that are available on the market. And uh, what you, you will typically see is uh, that the wall plug efficiency for wavelengths below 260 nanometers or to, below 275 nanometers are considerably lower than for 270 nanometers. Be, uh, because this technology of 275 nanometers is actually much more mature, uh, the power that is getting out of the LED is actually much better than for lower wavelengths. So uh, what I did here in the gray curve is uh, basically just the product of the wall plug efficiency and the relative RNA damage. And uh, this combined sterilization effic efficiency uh, is in the end what matters for disinfection. So uh, you will see this uh, gray curve actually peaks around 275 nanometers. So uh, uh, this is why those uh, two, currently the 275 nanometer LED is still the best technology for disinfection. So um, 
when uh, a designer wants to uh, uh, have an application to disinfect something, uh, it usually can be broken down to uh, the question, I have a surface here and I want to disinfect it, and uh, I have some LEDs, and the question is, how many LEDs do I need? How long do I need to turn the LEDs on? How, what is the distance of the LED to the surface? To answer all of those questions, I want to give you a short introduction, what can be done here. So what we offer as a solution is um, as additional information on our LEDs uh, are those called uh, wave files. So those wave files are measured data from our LEDs, which give uh, the three-dimensional um, yeah, where the rays go in the three dimensions. So uh, um, you can use this data in a optical simulation software, which is yeah, which is shown here, to simulate um, something called the irradiance on a surface on a detector. And uh, um, this was done here in this uh, in this example. And what you see here is for our LEDs, it looks something like this. So uh, what you have is the irradiance, which is measured in watts per square meter. And um, you see it depends on, uh, on, the, uh, on where on the surface you are. So in the middle, you get a little bit more of irradiation than at the edges. So uh, um, how do we get from here to uh, an actually usable value or um, to a, to a point where we can say how much disinfection we have. So this is what I want to show you here. What you can do when you uh, multiply the irradiance, which, which is the watt per square meter, which is like uh, the uh, power per square meter, um, and you multiply this with the time of exposure, then you will get the radiant exposure or dose. This dose, is uh, the units of this dose are um, joules per square meter. So it's an energy per square meter. And this, uh, this value is actually the one that is important for disinfection. So to kill some certain germ, you need a certain amount, uh, a certain dose, so a, a certain amount of joules per square meter. And uh, so there's, uh, mm, there are different uh, uh, or there's a naming for for different doses, um, stating how much of the germs you've uh, inactivated. So uh, if you have the D90 dose, then this means that 90% of the germs are inactivated. And 90, D99, then you have 99% inactivated, and so on. Typically, to get from one D90 value to the D99 value to the next value, you always have to multiply this value by, so from here to here, it's like the factor of two, factor of three, factor of four. And um, let's have an example. So if you have, for example, a D90 dose of 18 joules per square meter, this means that if uh, you get a, a dose of 18 joules per square meter, which is here in the red area, then you have in this red area, you have like 90% of your germs inactivated. This, this D90 dose is very much different for, diff for different germs and different viruses and bacteria and fungi. And uh, the tricky thing here is it's also very different for the same, uh, for the same type of germ. So it very much depends on which research group is looking at it and how the uh, the protocol was to measure it. Uh, so there can be huge deviations from uh, research group to research group in the results of the D90 dose. So you see, for example, here for the Dino for the coronavirus, there you can find studies where you have values of the D90 dose starting from six joules per square meter up to more than a hundred thousand. So there's basically a huge gap between them. Uh, but to, to get a usable value here for this presentation, I will use this 37, as a, which is a median of those, uh, of a lot of studies here. Most of the studies to uh, get this D90 dose were performed using so-called low pressure um, mercury lamps. So those are like UVC tubes that have been around already a few decades. 
they are currently being more and more replaced uh, by UVC LEDs because the UVC LEDs um, are don't have this um, toxic mercury in it. And so uh, the UVC LEDs are much more interesting for uh, consumer applications here. Because most of the data are done in with those low pressure lamps, uh, it's also interesting to see what the relation is between uh, low pressure lamps and LEDs if the D90 dose is similar. So we could look back to the um, wavelength dependence curve where we have uh, a similar um, similar RNA damage for the 254 nanometers, which is emitted by the low pressure lamps as for the 275 nanometers. But we can also look at this the study which showed that actually the the dose required for the LED for 275 nanometer LEDs is almost exactly the same as the one used for the low pressure lamp. So those values can be uh, moved, uh, used approximately uh, in the same way because the, the efficiency is almost the same. There's also a, like a recommendation from the IES photo, photobiology committee, uh, which says for surface disinfection, you should um, get like 200 to 1,000 joules per square meter. And uh, with those values, you see you can kill off almost everything here. I want to show you a quick um, simulation, what I've done here, um, just for, uh, for a UV panel consisting of nine of our UVC LEDs. And just to give you a understanding how, how these irradiation patterns and how uh, how those irradiation patterns can look like and how uh, how fast it, it is to achieve a certain type of disinfection or a certain dose it very much depends on the way uh, on the distance so you see for example here at the distance of four centimeters you have a rather small irradiated area but a large uh, a large irradiance if you uh, increase the distance you get a larger area irradiated, but also the maximum irradiance is much lower. If you would be, so if you want to uh, get like the D90 dose for Corona, so kill off 90% of coronaviruses, we would now need uh, to achieve the dose of uh, 37 joule per square meter. And this can be done at four distance, uh, four centimeters distance uh, in uh, 0.1 minutes, but at 20 centimeters distance, uh, we already need like uh, like one minute and okay and on the other hand for the dose of a thousand joules per square meter I just see that I missed a zero here it should be a thousand not a hundred here so the the time is much 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 larger so it depends on what kind of dose you want to achieve so those this thousand I wanted to put here is basically the maximum value here from this IES photobiology committee here in this case, it would be like three minutes or 27 minutes to achieve this doses. What you see in this little inset down here is uh, just a quick, like the uh, how the uh, disinfection times uh, will uh, vary with the distance. So basically there's approximately a squared dependence. So if the distance is uh, like doubled, then the time is like uh, four times larger. Um, another important topic about when working with those with UVC light is uh, safety. So generally, all UV light is dangerous, um, but especially UVC is dangerous because, as you can, as you've learned already, is uh, that the it can damage the DNA, which can lead to uh, yeah problems in your skin or also in your eyes. So this is why when working with uh, UVC light, you should always wear protective equipment if there's light coming out of your application. And in uh, applications, you should always take appropriate measures so that no light can go out. So there's also a, a value for the maximum allowed doses that uh, you can um, get per eight hours workday for 275 nanometers, which is uh, you know, 30 joules per square meter. So uh, to give you a feeling how fast you can actually get this, um, let's look back at our example of this uh, UV panel. If you have a 
distance of 20 centimeters, you can get this maximum doses in only 50 seconds. If you go to four centimeters, you can get this maximum dose already in six seconds. And if you can, if you go even closer to the uh, LEDs, then you will already get this maximum dose in below one second. So uh, you you can get damage on your skin quite quickly with those LEDs. So this is why it's important to be careful when working with those. So let's give a short summary of what we've uh, yeah, discussed so far. So uh, basically, 275 nanometer LEDs can be used for disinfection, and they are currently one of the best technologies to do this. I showed you a few D90 doses for germ inactivation, and I showed that those doses can vary a lot, uh, which needs to be taken into consideration depending on what kind of surface you have. You, you might need a longer, uh, a higher dose to achieve disinfection. And then I also showed you that we can use actually array files and optical simulations to simulate um, the irradiance and then to calculate a dose what is and uh, ex an expected exposure time needed to achieve a certain dose and therefore a certain amount of disinfection. And then I showed you that the UV light is uh, dangerous and you need to be careful when working with those. This podcast was taken from a recent Worth Electronic webinar. To view the materials and replay the webinar on demand, visit www.we-online.com slash webinars or click the link attached in this podcast. You can also download the complete application note ANO008 Disinfection with UVC LEDs at www.we-online.com slash app notes. You're listening to Worth Electronics' What's Up Radio podcast, where each week we are seeing what's up in the world of electronics and PCB design. We'll be checking in with leading industry experts and Worth Electronic technology specialists. We're going to shine a light on interesting topics such as energy harvesting, wireless power transfer, EMI, and so much more. Tune in to get technical design tips and applications during your commute, at your desk, or wherever you might be with Worth Electronics' What's Up podcast.